This is an axial CT image through the level of the neck after the use of intravenous contrast on a 23-year-old male with neck pain and swelling. As we scroll through the images here within the neck, right here we already see a low attenuating lesion with peripheral rim of enhancement in the peritonsillar region on the left side. This is consistent with a peritonsillar abscess, not to be confused with a retropharyngeal abscess, which would be in the retropharyngeal space right here, anterior to the spine. This peritonsillar abscess results in marked mass effect on the airway here with effacement of the ipsilateral follicula and piriform sinuses. Once you have a peritonsillar abscess, it's important to assess the airway as this can result in airway compromise. Notice that this peritonsillar abscess then extends into the peripharyngeal mucosal space and the pharyngeal mucosal space with resulting mass effect on the airway. It is also important to look at reactive nodes. Here we see a right level 2 reactive lymph node that is definitely greater than 1.5 centimeters. Here we see a reactive left level 2 node that is greater than 1.5 centimeters. And we also have left posterior triangle nodes here as well that measure up to 14 millimeters. It is important to make this diagnosis because this is essentially treated with antibiotics and incision and drainage of the abscess. There may be airway compromise, and depending on the airway compromise, the patient may need intubation. This is in contrast to a retropharyngeal abscess, which is located in the retropharyngeal space, which is a more serious diagnosis, as this has a greater chance of airway compromise, uh, and intubation is typically required for retropharyngeal abscesses. It's also important to assess the extent of a retropharyngeal abscess, as a retropharyngeal abscess can extend into the mediastinum. This case was a case of peritonsillar abscess with marked mass effect on the airway.